So um, why would you want to develop with MonoTouch? Um, the iPhone. Clearly the iPhone has the mind share, it has the market share, it has the economic market share. And that's, you know, very important. Um, you know, but you're a .NET developer. You've got, you've got a platform that's already the most popular platform. Um, you know, it's, you've got a tremendous amount of, of vested interest in continuing to use that platform. Um, you know, so there's a piece of this, um, which a lot of .NET developers actually haven't heard of, which is called Mono, which is an open source implementation of the .NET standards. Uh, and it is cross-platform. It's uh, actually fairly mature. Um, I used it a few years ago. Uh, didn't really find anything, you know, great or horrible about it. It just worked. I took some uh, .NET, this was a few years ago, so it was .NET 1.1 code. Uh, ran it on mono, seemed to work, and, you know, we moved on. So what exactly is MonoTouch? So, as I said, Mono is an open source implementation of .NET. Well, MonoTouch is a .NET C-sharp layer that uh, sits over the iPhone's Cocoa Touch interface. Um, Cocoa Touch is the, the native framework uh, for the iPhone. And so MonoTouch is this .NET C Sharp callable layer that sits on top of Cocoa Touch. It's pretty much a, it's a one to one uh, correlation between API calls in Cocoa Touch and API calls in MonoTouch. Uh, then there's MonoDevelop, the IDE. Uh, so it's a early port of Sharp Developer. And it's designed. Uh, it runs on the Mac, it runs on Windows, and it runs on Linux. Um, so that's the IDE. You'll actually have to use um, MonoDevelop on the Mac to uh, do a final compilation and uh, deployment. Well, you can do it with the command line utilities on the Mac, um, but I would recommend using Mono Develop, the MonoDevelop IDE. And then to build a user interface, uh, you'll use the interface builder. It's uh, equivalent to the design surface of uh, Visual Studio. I've already mentioned Cocoa Touch. Um, I've meant, then there's the Apple SDK. You'll have to register for the uh, iPhone developer program and then download the uh, Apple SDK. And then there's something, and I'm going to talk a little bit more about this, uh, but this concept of ahead of time compilation uh, that you'll want to uh, get familiar with. I've got some other slides on it, so uh, mention it in a moment. Uh, so what what is MonoTouch not? And this is a very important point. This is a issue that is getting lost in this discussion about Apple licensing and all that. Um, MonoTouch is not somehow Windows Forms WPF on the iPhone, okay? It's not some plug-in to Visual Studio. It's not some kind of cross-platform, cross-compiler type of tool. You can't take an existing application in Visual Studio, you know, install MonoTouch, and then flick some settings somewhere and have iPhone output. It just... It it doesn't work that way. Um, you are writing a native application that runs on the iPhone and you happen to be using it with .NET slash C Sharp language. Um, and so that's a very important point. We're not doing cross-platform development. We are doing native development on the iPhone with um, the uh, you know, Apple SDK, and we're natively calling into, um, you know, the iPhone APIs. So, um, you know, this is kind of how I think of it. If we think of .NET as uh, American English, um, we could think of MonoTouch as kind of like British English. Um, C Sharp is our common bond. Um, you know, I live in the southeastern U.S., so we kind of have our own dialect, our own idiosyncrasies. Um, I think of them as the normal dialect, the normal idiosyncrasy. So if I went over and uh, 
you know, was with my buddies uh, Chris Hardy or uh, Phil Wynn Stanley over in England, you know, they could be speaking a language I don't really understand, yet they could still be speaking English. And because of that common bond, I can learn about the, uh, you know, the local uh, customs, the local dialogue, because we understand the base English. So that's the way I think of Monotouch. It, you know, it's that bridge. It allows C Sharp to be in different places. Um, I probably don't have, not using the correct terms here on what the additions of Monotouch are, um, but there is a, a free version uh, allows you to write code and deploy to the local simulator. You can't deploy to a device with it. There is a uh, single user version, for lack of a better term. Um, that version uh, is the $400 version that you hear about. And then there is a uh, enterprise version, which is for, meant for teams of people working together. So I mentioned this ahead of time compilation. Um, so if we think about it, you know, how .NET and then Mono work, um, we're going to compile from our VB or our C Sharp uh, language files. We're going to comp compile into MSIL. And then when an application executes, that MSIL is uh, converted into actual machine code. And that's done for us, uh, you know, through .NET, through Mono. And, you know, that happens uh, basically in, in memory on the device that we're actually running on. Um, there's some problems with that scenario, though. And that is that... Um, Oops, I skipped, sorry, skipped a, uh, there, that's a no-no. And, you know, there are some contractual issues about interpreted code, about shared libraries, uh, and then in the iPhone operating system, there are some kernel limitations about doing that. So how do we get around that? How do we make something run natively on the device, not violate contractual issues, um, and that's with the mono ahead of time compilation engine. So we start with our IL, we start with VB slash C sharp code. Uh, we'll compile that and we end up with IL code. Then we go through this mono ahead of time compiler. We end up with native code that's linked together with the mono runtime into a single executable which runs on the physical device, on the ARM processor in the uh, iPhone. And so we go, that's how we're able to sidestep the just-in-time compilation issue. We've already compiled our code to run natively on the device, and we've compiled down to machine code. So life is, life is pretty good there. So what are some of the features uh, in Monotouch that I want to mention? Um, like I said, there's a MonoDevelop uh, iPhone add-in, which is part of Monotouch. Uh, it's our interface into then we then Monotouch is our interface into uh, Coco Touch. So we've got this Coco Touch .NET piece. Uh, we have a fully static ahead of time compiler, and then we've got support for a lot of there's support for a lot of the features um, that you already know and love. Uh, you've got generics, you've got link, you've got a whole lot of .NET features. I found that I am using, a, I'm interfacing into a lot of web services, so I am using a lot of link to XML, and that works, and it works perfectly. Also, I've done some looking at things, and I'm able to do a lot, I'm able to do a lot of asynchronous calls. Um, I can serialize, deserialize uh, uh, JSON, um, so that's, that's, that's goodness there, so. Um, all right, so usually by now I've talked, I have not talked this long, um, and we've looked at some code. So let's go ahead and switch over and start looking at some code. And we're going to look at a beginning application that I've written. It's very simple. It's basically the equivalent of, um, you know, a number of the examples that you've already seen online. Uh, this is Mono Develop right here. Um, we have uh, our solutions window. Uh, inside of it are our projects. 
I've got um, you know this uh, main file opened up, and if we look at it, uh, it will look you know. It, to me, honestly, it doesn't look a whole lot different than a console application. Uh, you know, that's it's the same kind of concepts. Um, but uh, we've got our app delegate, uh, which is going to be our key thing, and then finished launching. Um, one of the finished launching is a um, method that is used basically to run a lot of setup code. Um, at least that's what I've found. Uh, yours, your findings may be different. Uh, the reason I use it for running a lot of setup code is there is a limitation inside of the iPhone operating system, which is uh, if your application becomes unresponsive after 20 seconds or doesn't start up after 20 seconds, then your application is terminated. So uh, if you go out and do something long running in here, then something bad is going to happen. Um, However, if you do something that's long running and then do it asynchronously, uh, then you're okay. So that's why I determined there's a lot of setup stuff. Um, you don't want to block the user interface, basically. Um, if we look at our code, um, we've got some stuff set up. Because uh, I use a lot of Hungarian notation, uh, you'll see that I've got this label. I've got my uh, IntelliSense inside of MonoDevelop. I can, you know, set some properties. I can also, uh, next thing down, you'll see a, oops, 